All right, and welcome back to our second final conversation uh, this morning. Joining us, we're going to uh, talk, well, we're going to talk all about education and finance uh, and banking. And in with us, we have uh, none other than, join, well, join us via Zoom. Let's start there. None other than Dr. Vincent Palacio. He's the president of the University of Belize, for those who don't know him. As well as we have joining us in studio, Mr. Egbert Irving, and he's the director of the Office of Institutional Advancement, as well as Derek Conarchy, and he's a coordinator at the Institute of Banking and Finance. Good morning. Good morning, good morning gentlemen. Good morning. good morning, President. Good morning. All right, so we want to learn, we want to get into this discussion <laughs> and find out uh, what is all the talk about when it comes to the Institute of Banking and Finance uh, and the University of Belize's in. Involvement. So let's start with uh, Mr. Egbert, sure. uh, Irving. Uh, let's lay the foundation in terms of the discussion uh, and what it is that we're talking about when we speak to the Office of Institutional Advancement. Okay, the Office of Institutional Advancement. Yes, mm -hmm. um, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks very much for having us here. Um, the University of Belize is the, the national university and it is tasked with ensuring that we provide um, teaching and learning, of course, uh, research and, uh, and service mm -hmm. to the nation of Belize. And with that, it needs to have several um, units, departments, divisions in order for it to be able to achieve its mandate. And the Office of Institutional Advancement is, is simply a, 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 an office that is tasked with ensuring that we maintain the relationship with external mm -hmm. agencies. Okay. So um, it is our responsibility for stakeholder engagement um, with other universities, agencies, organizations, NGOs, private sector, and things of that sort. Um, but as the name implies, uh, mm -hmm. institutional advancement, it advances it's, it's also <laughs> I, uh, advances the institution. <laughs> so I, I, I use the term the leading edge mm -hmm. of yeah. the University of Belize, where we try to establish various, whatever it projects, programs, courses, um, centers, mm -hmm. uh, institutes. Yeah. And, and, and once those have been impregnated and given birth, then we pass them over to a surrogate mother or father, <laughs> <laughs> which might be a faculty or yeah. it might be an institute or it might be some other um, arm so of the university. Why, why not? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to understand. So institutes and institutions that are built under the university, how are they separate from faculties and other departments that are there already? Right. So the, the term institution mm -hmm. is, is, is a generic term which basically is just a collection of rules, basically. Mm -hmm. They're talking about an individuals come together to, to abide by that particular, mm -hmm. or those um, rules that are established. An institute or a center is typically set up within a university. It can be a standalone entity yeah. or it can be based within a particular faculty and it has a specific mandate or a specific mission which would allow it to be more focused okay. than what would probably have been a more broader based mission mm -hmm. of that specific faculty. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, we do have, uh, this is a, the third uh, institute, I institute in, in Belize, um, uh, in the University of Belize, we have the um, ERI, the Environmental Research Institute, which tends to be a standalone entity, but it works closely with the Faculty of Science and Technology because and that's where mm -hmm. it would get all of the, the, the resources, the human capital resources and the projects, they tend to go hand in hand with the activities that take place in that particular faculty as opposed to, let's say, health services, right. which might be a little bit different. Okay. And similarly with the, with the Banking and yeah. Finance Institute, right. that would be more related to the, the um, Faculty of Management and Social Sciences. So, so let's yeah. get into the Institute of Banking and Finance. Am I going yes. to learn how to do my taxes? Taxes, <laughs> that will be on the list, yes. <laughs> but at the moment, the actual focus as we jumpstart this institute is actually for the institute to pivot itself as a leading provider for courses and programs within and, of course, for the banking and finance industry as well as those outside of the banking and finance industry. So it will include agents or units like real estate, uh, pawn shops, 
casinos, all of those that would not actually be considered a financial institution, but it actually have an element that when we look at the regulator side, for example, Central Bank and Financial Institute, FIU of Belize, they actually have a part to play in it. So the, the beginning is actually where we're focusing on this specific industry. And as a matter of fact, our first course that we're launching comes ending of March. Mm -hmm. And the focus of that first course is AML, anti-money laundering and countering of financing, countering of financing of terrorism, as well as financial crime prevention. Mm -hmm. So that's actually where we're starting immediately. Um, we, have a, we have a conference that actually launches the institute today at the Biltmore Plaza. Okay. So that's actually where we officially, we launch our logo and, and become much more public. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, at the moment, it's actually that jump start for the first course being anti-money laundering. I, I want to ask, and, and we'll get into, and I, I think it's a great place to start, and we'll get into um, the signing off, etc. But I want to just bring Dr. Uh, Vincent Palacio into the conversation uh, for a bit to ask about the uh, driver behind the establishment of such an institute. Uh, what's the overarching vision uh, for the university uh, as we launch and seek to develop and grow? Of course. Uh, thanks, uh, Paul. And of course, uh, it is a pleasure to be uh, with you this morning. I was looking forward to seeing you in person, but I was told that uh, you know, th there might not be enough space for three persons. But <laughs> so we would have always made space for you, even if they have to kick me out. <laughs> but uh, you know, always a pleasure to share what we're doing here at uh, the university, our national university. Um, they, you know, when uh, my second month in the president's office, you know, as we continue to strive to to be more relevant as a university. Uh, we were approached to provide courses or, or, or short workshops and sessions in the banking and finance sector. And, uh, you know, around uh, meeting the needs for the same stakeholders that Mr. Kanaki mentioned just now. And I said, uh, you know, why don't we just establish an institute yeah. so we could provide this uh, such training uh, so it could be uh, in a timely fashion uh, manage in a in an urgent mode uh, rather than going through a faculty per se and, and so uh, we approach the FSC the Financial Services Commission and uh, they have assisted us with establishing this uh, Institute so we're very glad that we're here to be able to provide training for Belizeans in the areas of anti-money laundering and some of the other type of courses, as, as you will uh, learn about. Here in Belize, uh, in the past, uh, persons used to have to travel uh, overseas, particularly to Miami, to do their training. Now we're doing it homegrown wow. right here in Belize. Uh, second, there are a number of organizations that require their employees to be trained. All right, uh, again, a list was uh, furnished just now by Mr. Connery Key. Here we are to meet that need here at UB. And, and third, uh, there is the, the Securities Industry Act of 2021. And this makes it a requirement for training uh, of these persons employed in these financial sectors. And again, uh, how important. So we at the National University figured that we will uh, come to the table and provide that service. Mm -hmm. And last, you know, there are no other academic institutions in the country that provide this particular uh, uh, training, this particular service. So we're happy to step in that gap and make sure that uh, we're being relevant with this particular sector. I am glad you're showing uh, the, our Faculty of Management and Social Science complex in Belize City, mm -hmm. for this will be the home of the Institute, the okay. Institute of Banking in and Belize Finance. City. Yeah. Of yeah. course, right in Belize nice. City. That's, that's a commercial capital. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because we can't we can take it anywhere else. So, Mr. President, as I, I guess what I'm trying to understand from oh. this is that you don't have to be a student to be a part of this institute. 
Not at all, not at all. There will be short courses, there will be longer courses. Uh, some of these courses could translate into academic programs. Okay. You know, we do offer a bachelor's degree in business administration with a major in finance. So again, um, we're meeting all needs, mm -hmm. even students. And yeah, so then the, it goes right into the question of how can you apply? You say that this one particular course is beginning in March, and Correct. as the president mentioned, there are short courses, yes. long courses, so it doesn't have to be a, a semester that you're taking certain courses. So mm -hmm. um, how can I know when a course is going to be um, offered, and how can I apply it? Okay, so at the moment, especially for the course that is coming up in March, it would be that you can you have two options. You can visit the amlfc.institute. That's actually the institution that the university is partnering with. Mm -hmm. It's actually founded by Compliance Aid, which is a well-known organization in the international when it comes to the compliance program, mm -hmm. alongside St. Thomas University. So you go on their website, mm -hmm. and it's, it's very user-friendly and straightforward. You click the respective course. In this case, it would be AML. Mm -hmm. And from there, it, it would provide you with a drop box of different universities. And of course, okay. you, the Belize university right there. is right mm -hmm. there. If you don't want to go that option, you can go on the University of Belize website, mm -hmm. ub.edu.bz. And there should be a link that okay. says uh, AMLFC. And actually, that takes you right back to the registration process. Yeah. Are these mm -hmm. courses online? Actually, are they in person? It actually the first one that will be in March can actually be online, okay. but the exam element of it, you will actually have to visit the, the institute I at like one of our um, yeah. exam centers. Okay. But the actual 15-week program, it's mm -hmm. 15 weeks. You take one program, one module per per week. You can actually do it online. Okay. It's one of the exam the element. To do it in person. You would have it after the first cohort. Okay. Because what happens as we're jump starting is we also will have to find qualified facilitators Indeed. for the program. But in the in the start, we're as I mentioned with our partnership with the AMLFC, we will actually have facilitators from the institute that provides and that also ensures that the institute remains at a level that is relevant and it also ensures that the quality of the content that you will get is actually identical to the AMLFC Institute. Okay. So there will be that, that, that joy mm -hmm. that it's local, but also an international recognition too. And this, you call it a course. So Correct. I'm assuming that you're going to have uh, exams, tests, etc. So is it going to be, the layout is going to be like um, once a week, twice a week, how many hours per session? And um, is it credited? Correct. So it's actually a 15 week, 15 week course, mm -hmm. and it's one module per week, and it's actually something that is self-paced. Okay. So that means you have the 15 weeks, yes, but it's just a matter of moving from one module to the next. You have a set of videos mm -hmm. or or lectures that you need to follow through, and then you do the requisite homework or assignments and quizzes, of course. And uh, it's really something that you can do on your own time, especially if you're a busy professional like yourself. You don't have, you're not stick with the, the within the day mm -hmm. program. You can do it at night. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I believe is going to be very useful and very important for the industry because as what Dr. Vincent mentioned, at the moment we actually have professionals within the specific industries mm -hmm that are already operating, but not necessarily have the same level of qualification mm -hmm. in terms of the, the certification we have in the AML. Yeah. So what we're actually doing, we're simply providing a service for an opportunity and also for a task that already exists. So, and the, what that does is for those institutions, it's actually a badge of honor, it's a yeah. badge of recognition and achievement that, hey, look at this, our staff mm -hmm. is now at a higher level in terms of compliance mm -hmm. and in terms of following the right procedures locally as well as internationally how, when it comes. How do we get a buy-in mm -hmm. uh, from these uh, private sector businesses? Uh, and I would imagine you have some 
uh, public sector arms that also may be interested. I ask that to ask if perhaps this is a step ahead of its time mm -hmm. uh, in that there may not be a great level of understanding among these businesses as to the importance and the need for these types of courses, especially the anti-money laundering course. And with that, the demand uh, for such a course may not be uh, as high as one would want it to be without that education and information being put out being to put them. Out, yeah. Well, yeah, several things, sure. just be before I jump to that question, I'll just circle back um, yeah. to the, the previous Actually, question mm -hmm. about duration and things yeah. of that mm -hmm. sort and whether the modality in terms right. of mm -hmm. the, the program. Um, we will be um, flexible enough, agile enough to be able to have face-to-face -face for those persons who would like that. So, for example, if a specific entity, a specific bank, a specific insurance entity would like to have mm -hmm. their people trained in right. a, a self-contained group yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and would prefer to have them so that they can address their internal issues as well while going through that particular training, mm -hmm. then okay. we can put on yeah. a specific customized yeah. program mm -hmm which would then have a more face-to-face a -face element. Yeah. Yeah. Or if we find out to your, sec to your question about the demand, if we find that the demand is such that you have different, we, we learn differently as yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and there are some persons who are social learners like myself, yeah. who would prefer to have that, that setting yeah. where we engage, yeah. we have that dialogue, we have a group meetings and things of that sort. So if we find that you have uh, a, a certain um, cadre of persons who would want that particular service, then we would be able to provide that as well yeah. because we do have the yeah. classroom space, we do have the ability to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Now when it comes to demand, the thing is the, the uh, President Palacio mentioned earlier about the regulatory environment. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing more and more, I believe, just in the last sitting of the House, mm -hmm. there was a revision made to the, to the, to the um, regulation regarding the Financial right. Services Commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are, are beefing up the regulatory environment, regulatory framework, which would require these entities that are involved in financial transactions, international movements of funds and things of that sort mm -hmm. to be compliant, to have this sort of certification. So basically we are providing a service that That's is required by law yeah, yeah. for particular segment Indeed, of the yeah. financial uh, um, space. That's yeah. excellent. So, yeah. so yeah. and, and th this compliance is, is um, it's time bound as well. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's for it, the, the, the duration is two years because the, the environment is so dynamic. Mm -hmm. New laws, new regulation come on board yeah. quickly. Yeah. So you constantly need to be completely. So what are? Oh, um, I, I was just going to add to what Mr. Egbert mentioned, just to piggyback from what you mentioned with the demand. Actually, as we speak, when it comes to the financial institutions, the financial intelligence um, unit actually requires that for these organizations to have a, what is called a designated officer, an MLCO, mm -hmm. money laundering and compliance officer, is actually required at the moment for those within the banking industry as well as those outside, which is called designated mm -hmm. non-banking and finance industry. So that demand by itself shows that the need is there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a matter for us, the Institute, to propel ourselves yeah. as that designated partner mm -hmm. as well as that designated authority in terms of the way we ensure we keep the standards internationally but also provide something that is relevant mm -hmm. going back to what Mr. Egmer Egbert mentioned we want to also know what the needs are yeah. apart from supplying these certifications we will do our part to actually meeting with them to see how we can be of a better assistance to the industry. Uh, we're going to wrap up yeah. shortly uh, uh, I, I wanted to get a brief idea of some of the other topic, other courses uh, coming in the pipeline, apart from what we have uh, prepared for March. And, and I like the concept of an uh, institute because it gives you the flexibility mm -hmm. that perhaps a, a faculty would that, that is based on a school compound may not give correct, you, correct. right? Yeah. So, so, so that brings some clarity into my mind in, to, to in terms of uh, how we move forward with this. Uh, other courses that we have down the pipeline. Maybe Dr. Palacio could take that one or, uh, yeah? Uh, repeat the question again, uh, In terms of other courses, we know we have one coming up in March. Uh, yes, what's the yes, plans for, for more courses? Uh, within yeah, the definitely. The, yeah. the, the demand to ask is right in front of you. <laughs> 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 uh, well, let me, let me throw the question over there then. Yeah, so 
apart from the anti-money laundering, we will we'll have courses like cybersecurity. Okay. We will have courses like fintech. As we already know, when it comes to the finance industry, that element of technology is becoming cutting edge so that we're slowly starting to see the idea of a bank start to become almost invisible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost contactless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the element of fintech, which also also goes well with cybersecurity because it also creates an, an uh, element of not just opportunities, but also caution yeah. in the way we use it. Right then we have the countering of financing of terrorism, and we also have the area of uh, fraud, fraud mm -hmm. financial fraud prevention. So they all play a role, if you notice, and they're all similar, but what it does is actually separate each of them and give you an in-depth view of how the actual module itself can assist. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned, it's not limited to the finance industry. It's also those agents outside of the industry that can be of assistance because the, the umbrella idea is this. By taking the course and being much more informed, it helps you to be a better employee, a better yeah. organization, and a better economy mm -hmm. because it's, it's helping you to be knowledgeable to ensure that your organization is not being used mm -hmm. without your knowing by some type of fraudulent activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, so this yeah. April's question about um, training to do your taxes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we will, we will provide as an extension to what was um, um, tabled by Mr. Yeah. Connacht. We will have those short-term programs mm -hmm. that would meet a more direct need. So mm -hmm. a finance for non-finance managers, how to do your taxes, you right. know, introduction to finance, just some, some basic short courses which could just help persons who are interested in those. Yeah, 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 <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, to do life, exactly. <laughs> right. uh, my, my final question uh, it would be have directed to, to Dr. Palacio. Um, being that this is the third institute that the University of Belize is engaging in, what, um, what, are, what is your vision, your overall arching vision um, for these institutes to provide to the general public of Belize? Yes, uh, April, excellent question. Uh, the key thing is for us to, to be relevant as a university, to be able to touch where we're needed. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the institute that we launched late last year, the Intercultural uh, Indigenous Language Institute, Again, a space for conversation around indigenousness and, and impacts on indigenous communities, etc. Uh, so again, it's a direct contact with where we're needed as the national university. Mm -hmm. So uh, like Paul rightly said, the institute put us more on the ground yeah. to do uh, effective work. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, uh, you know, at UB, we're looking at ways in which we could be more effective, more relevant, more cost effective as well. So I, again, uh, just to be relevant and to meet our mission as the university for national development, be a catalyst for change for national development. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, President. And thank you so much, um, Mr. Uh, if I may, April, yes. sorry, last, yes. <laughs> um, just to express gratitude to some of our supporters in this institute. Go right ahead, uh, yeah. Of course, uh, Mr. Kent Clare from the FIU uh, Financial Intelligence Unit, you know, have been a huge supporter and uh, Mr. Rene Nunes, uh, now from the Ministry of Economic Development, have uh, you know been a guidance as well to us. Mr. Claude Halak from the FSC, uh, thank you for your support. Uh, and you know, here at the university, I, we couldn't do it without uh, Mr. Egbert Irvin uh, and his team at the Institutional Advancement Office. So again, gratitude going all around to our supporters, Ministry of Finance as well, Honorable uh, Christopher Coy. Uh, from that ministry. So again, a lot of supporters uh, in pushing this agenda, this so required, this needed agenda. Perfect. Thank you so much, President. And of course, You're thank welcome, you, April. Mr. Irving, Mr. Connor Kay. Uh, best of luck in your launch this morning, and we can't wait to see what other good things come out of the university. Sure, thank you very thank much you for coming. And for having us. with that, we are going to take our final break call. We'll be back for wrap up. Stay tuned.